This term, our laboratory, begins with the introduction of some of the tools of the trade. Tools that you will find in the kit that you purchased last week. Electronic circuits are assemblies of smaller parts. We call those parts elements or components in this course. One thing that all components have in common is that they all have terminals. Some components, like this resistor, have two terminals, this one and that one. This capacitor also has two terminals, and so does this inductor. This battery here has two terminals as well, the negative one and the positive one. Other components have three terminals, like this uh, bipolar transistor, a BJT, or this other one, a metal oxide semiconductor transistor, commonly known as a MOSFET. It does not stop there. This more complex component, an op-amp, has eight terminals, which sometimes we call pins or legs. To assemble an electronic circuit, we need to join the terminals of the different components that form the whole circuit. But the question is, how? In ancient times, that is, 40, 50 years ago, to assemble a prototype circuit, we would join the terminals of the corresponding components, sometimes using cables with alligator clips like this one. That cable joined electrically the terminals of two components. But this was a clumsy idea. Some alligators would come loose and the circuit would stop working. And finding the loose connection was a nightmare. Someone had a better idea. This 5-in-1 metallic multiclip. It can connect up to five terminals of five different components together. Just insert each terminal into one of the five clips, like uh, these two resistors in the picture. But they didn't stop there. The inventors prepared a plastic frame with many parallel slots on the back, slots that are the right size for a multi-clip to fit in. And on the front of the frame, five holes that match each one of the five clips each hole just big enough to receive the terminal of a component. On the front of the frame, we see that each 5-in-1 multi-clip is identified with a number, and each single clip is labeled with a letter. There is a 5-in-1 in row 10, occupying letters A, B, C, D, and E, and another 5-in-1 in the same row 10, occupying letters F, G, H, I, and J. Sometimes we call the first one the 10 low, and the second one the 10 high. We call such prototyping board a protoboard, or a breadboard. On the sides of the board, we see on the back there are very long multi-clips that run all the way through from the top to the bottom of the board. We call those the rails. There are four rails, two on one side and two on the other side. They correspond to this long column of holes. The second long clip on the other column and the other two on the far side, here and here. Usually, we use those rails to connect to them the power supply, so that the power supply is not far from any part of the circuit that we need to hook up to it. Immediately, we observe that we could connect two different power supplies, huh? Sure, but in our course very often we have only one. In that case, I prefer to use the positive of the power supply on one side, the top, and the negative of the power supply on the far side, 
the bottom. Summarizing, to join the terminals of two elements, just insert those terminals into two holes of the protoboard corresponding to the same 5-in-1 multi-clip. But what if we need to join more than five components? Hmm, easy. We just bind two 5-in-1 multi-clips together with a piece of wire like this. And uh, voila! We can now connect together up to eight different components. By the way, that piece of wire is what we call a jumper. You may repeat this procedure as necessary. Now I have two questions for you. Questions that I expect you can answer the first day of the lab, perhaps during your pre-lab quiz. Question A. We have already joined two multi-clips with a jumper. If we jump to a third multi-clip, how many components can we connect together now? Question B. Now consider that you have joined n plus 1 multi-clips. Of course, to do that you used n jumpers. Please come up with a generic formula that takes n, the number of jumpers, and which outputs the maximum number of components that the extended multi-clip can take. And now we talk about electric schematics used in this laboratory. In electrical technology, we use several types of schematics. Today, we will introduce two types of schematics that are at the core of our laboratory experience. Function schematics and uh, wiring schematics. Function schematics are the ones that you saw in previous courses in physics and in high school, like this one. In it, we do not represent the details of how the components are deployed, geographically speaking, on the finished board, no. What is important in the function schematics is to facilitate the analysis of how the circuit performs this or that function. It is, if you may, a theoretical diagram. On the other hand, a wiring schematics may not be easy to use to analyze the circuit, but it specifies in clear detail how the circuit is assembled, in our case, down to the detail of which multi-clip and which hole will be the joining point of each component's terminal. Remember, we identify a hole in the protoboard with the number of the multi-clip and a letter. In all truth, circuits as simple as the ones in this laboratory do not qualify for a wiring schematics. No, that is true but we will require them as a training tools for your future as engineers so that when you really need them next term designing and assembling a robot of your own from scratch for the end of term competition that will decide your final grade you can prepare a solid electronic core for that moving beast Let's talk now of the quality of your prototyped circuit, which is a component of the grade in the lab final exam, and the fundamental aspects of your next term robot core. You see this circuit and this one. Look at them. Both correspond to the very same function schematics. So, electronically speaking, they are the same circuit. But guess which one will survive operation inside a moving and shaking case, as in a robot? Yes, you guessed right, this one. The neatness also provides us, apart from robustness, a prototype where we can look for mistakes more easily and quickly during the competition. But what makes for a great prototype? First, the power supply is connected to the rails. 
only one power supply? Well, the positive on one side and the negative on the far side of the board on the rails. Second, components are mounted flush with the board most of the time, not always, with their terminals clipped to the minimum necessary length. The terminals are bent at 90 degrees like this and clipped to the necessary length. When we are tight for space, sometimes elements are mounted like this. First, we bend the terminals and then we clip them to the same penetration length to ensure a proper and secure mounting to the multi-clips of the breadboard. We still need to include the protoboarding tips to allow for measuring of voltages and currents. But we will talk about that when we introduce the multimeter. In this lab, we'll make use of two types of cables, as in this picture. Stranded core, like this one, which makes for a flexible connection like the power cord of an AC adapter. And solid core, like this one, that is moldable and keeps its shape. Both are covered in a thermoplastic jacket Insulation, usually polyvinyl chloride, PVC. To connect the cable, we need to strip out part of the insulation at the points of connection. We will do that with a wire stripper like this one or like this other one, which you can find in your kit. To cut the jumpers, we will use solid core color-coded wires of caliber AWG-22. By the way, AWG stands for American Wire Gauge, which is a standard way of specifying the caliber of a cable in North America. The bigger the AWG number, the thinner the cable is. For instance, home wiring uses either AWG-12 or AWG-14. Car wiring is usually done with AWG-16. In this part, we can observe a true expert, Dr. Jesus Calvino Fraga, assembling a small circuit. Here you can see its function schematics. For this part, I strongly advise you to copy these schematics to paper and then try to relate what Dr. Calvino is doing on the board to the schematics. What this circuit actually does is not relevant to us at this point. No, it isn't. It is merely an excuse to illustrate the relationship between a function schematics and the corresponding wiring, and very importantly, to show efficient and professional ways of mounting a prototype circuit on a protoboard. Observe the use of the wire stripper, the wire clipper, and the long nose pliers. First, we connect the positive power rail of the power supply to clip 4A. That converts the whole multi-clip for low into the positive of the power supply. But pin 8 of the 555 is also connected to the multi-clip in clip 4E. So that completes the connection of pin 8 to the positive of the power supply, this connection here. Now he'll connect pin 4 of the timer to the power supply using three jumpers. Observe. <music>
Now, using two jumpers, he has joined pin 1 to the negative rail of the power supply, the so-called ground, here in the function schematics. Thank you.